Celebrating 15 years of Young Turks. Hello and welcome to Young Turks, India's longest running show on startups and entrepreneurship. I'm Shireen Bhan. On the show today, we put the spotlight on entrepreneurs who are making starting up fashionable. Let's take a look at what we have lined up for you over the next 30 minutes. We revisit our Young Turks Sanjay Garth's label Raw Mango, a brand that's been adding value and innovating on the loom since 2008. Meet the mind behind the labellife.com, an online portal that merges commerce, content and celebrity status. Also enter the world of sustainable fashion with pure cotton or karakapas. It has almost been a decade since a Delhi-based designer started his journey into the world of fashion with one core philosophy, to revive traditional weaving skills and to give a high fashion twist to contemporary Indian hand-woven textiles. We're talking about our young Turk from 2010, Sanjay Garg and his label Raw Mango. Now, be it saris, fabrics or stoles, Raw Mango's entire catalogue reflects the skills of more than 450 craftspeople that are employed by the brand today. Sanjay started this label in his apartment studio in Vasant Kunj, Delhi, way back in 2008 and is today prepping for the finale at the Lakme Fashion Week in August this year. Having recently made way to Mumbai with the flagship store in Kolaba, Sanjay is now looking to target tier 2 cities not by the online route but by setting up traditional brick and mortar stores. So in a nutshell, Raw Mango's business model is as refreshing as its designs, bootstrapped, profitable and offline. Megha caught up with the sari revivalist at Anguri Bari, Raw Mango's Delhi outlet to find out how Sanjay weaved his entrepreneurial journey and what he stacked up for us for the future. Take a look. We were driving to the Raw Mango uh, office which is in Chhatarpur in a farmhouse, extremely secluded from the main city. That's right. Uh, what made you think that you can open a store here? Let people so, think you're well, crazy? Well, I remember in 2007 when you had, it's, a, it's a, just a two-room somewhere. We had only four tailors. Yeah. So, well, it's an interesting story. I looked at the space. I said, I only wanted this. And everyone told me, are you mad? Who's going to come here? A and like in Chhatarpur. Chhatarpur, first of all, who is going to drive down to here? There's no board, no advertising, no walking. But I said, no, I really want to do this. So what made you get? I think the space gave me a surrounding, gave me that you know. Again, I said that that the, vibe. The, yeah, the vibe, the the way the design has been seen. I just took this space and took that whole risk. There's no still, there's no board, and there's no direction. Actually, the turnout is there like 98 percent because people who come here actually they come to buy. Yeah. They just know to just walk in. Look around. So yeah. people actually they have done their study and they they know where to go, how much to buy, which is interesting actually. Huh. And now I'm so happy that Chhatrapur is all growing. We have many things happening on the side. So what you've done is you've made sure that if people are making an effort, they will at least buy a garment well, from Gaumango. I didn't really mean that way, but I think trust me, it works this way because yeah. people making effort coming to one and maybe I have out of 20, maybe five people, but then they're all buying. Yeah, almost from the beginning, you had celebrities endorsing the brand and you always uh, somehow got uh, that, that high fashion, that high street look and you managed to crack that perfectly well while you were in the sustainable spa fashion space, yeah. right? So, uh, how did that balance work I think uh, I've been saying that, you know, we say that we are reviving textile. Yeah. But the thing is that uh, I think textile is reviving all of the fashion of India. It is. So, to me, celebrity and all everyone endorsing because it's, we can able to create enough uniqueness in our world which exists here. Yeah. This is the only country where handloom happens and uh, the maximum handlooms are exist. Okay. Do you feel that some in, in an attempt to make sustainable fashion, uh, the prices all automatically shoot up, it reaches a certain price segment. How do you get into the sustainable fashion space and yet make it affordable for regular people to experience textile again? What do you really call is affordability? For ah. for you, 3,000 rupees affordable, but not in a village. Correct. So A, that is first, is very much a reflection, the market is a very much reflection of the, the way we True. are, True. with the whole community system, India. So it's a bigger question to ah. crack. B, I think uh, we really need to look up today that is that handloom, you, you think that everyone can wear it? I don't think so. Mm. It is a luxury today. It is. So in that luxury segment, who are the people in India can afford the luxury, it's a question mark. Yeah. So it's kind of a pyramid. Huh. So from top of the pyramid, from museum to let's say Fab India, there are many different companies, Anoki, Good Earth, 
and many different kind of designers they're all catering, they're all catering the different, the different kind yeah, of market yeah. so not really not everyone every brand has to cater everyone as well so, so raw, one need to find their own niche in that bigger pyramid so raw mango is always going to be on top of the pyramid well we wish to <laughs> you wish to okay sanjay as an entrepreneur and sanjay as a designer <laughs> is it a perfect blend or are, are the two at conflict at some points there are a lot of conflict that way and what I, are those uh, conflicts <laughs> so many time it has happened that so many things are not commercially viable but we have done it hmm. Uh, so there is a conflict always in terms of graphic also sometime i'll just give you a few example i yeah. don't know want to use the image of product or my product mm. or a woman or mm. someone wearing it yeah. there's always a conflict do you think the the client is going to understand you think people are going to relate in lucknow without any imagery some sort of a hint so minimal so there is a conflict every every stage but i enjoy that whole journey by the way yeah. you understand the market much better you grow as a person you understand the market and different cities like what Chan, what the way chennai think maybe then chandigarh yeah. they are very different so always a learning but they of course there are conflicts okay and uh, now we are seeing uh, raw mango you know venture into other social media platforms as well you know like, uh, like instagram uh, yes. like just how the feed is designed design is not whether you making you wearing a blue actually we both are wearing we both blue are. <laughs> but it's not that you wearing a blue or red yeah. or uh, the, the your flair is small or big huh. design is a way of living life so i think that is what i want to share on the instagram even the political view while through uh, some of the like, uh, say well whenever we do indira gandhi's post on instagram is yeah. always a controversy around yeah. it and i'm going to tell them you know listen i'm not about i'm supporting her political whatever she done but she has a great aesthetic she is yeah. one of our first uh, women prime minister yeah. what she wore what she done for cotton industry is uh, incredibly amazing would you look at sales uh online or would that be like your main focus Honestly, at some point not right now right now we are not able to meet the demand as such hmm. again i want to say i don't know how can you create that luxury online yeah the luxury here is like you walk in my store you know how what is around even the mumbai store there's a beautiful garden outside hmm. how do i say how do i create an experience, experience. online is a question mark but then i think if you that, want to reach out to tier 2 cities but at the same time you want to give them an experience but as at the same i need to so i i need to able to manage that as well if i know that i'm not able to manage right now huh. i should not just do it thing just sake of it okay. so that's what i'm saying we're trying to meet the demands we are increasing production everywhere we're trying to make things streamline like we have these uh, two or three store open in two years so and we might open a store in hyderabad too so there are when would you see that well um, let's see maybe end of the year sanjay thank you so much for speaking to us thank and it was a so pleasure much. talking thank to you, so you much, and Nina. we wish to do this revisit <laughs> sometime again in the future when you have many 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 more stores So that is great news for you ladies in Hyderabad and Sanjay here's wishing you all the very best with the future. With that it is time for us to head into a break but coming up next on Young Turks we meet the mind behind the labellife.com an online portal that merges commerce, content and celebrity status. Stay tuned. Celebrating 15 years of Young Turks.